Hi everyone, I, I'm Chris Edgar from Black Magic Collective. Um, I'm a composer, director, and producer, like most people in independent film, I wear all the hats. Uh, I just finished directing a film last weekend, actually called The Electro Rocker, uh, which is about a teenage misfit who, because of a freak quantum event, finds a new friend in a being made of electricity and the 80s heavy metal songs in the main character's phone. So it, it, it may sound like a bit to wrap your head around, but trust me, it's fun. Uh, and of course, I'm here uh, to do a panel today uh, about the art of film podcasting. We're going to be talking about uh, what it takes to create an effective filmmaking podcast in terms of reaching your audience, in terms of the technical aspects of presenting the podcast, what type of mics and audio software and all that good stuff to use. Uh, welcome to everybody who is here. Uh, please give us, please, please drop us a line in the chat. Uh, let us know where you're here from. Please let us know uh, what role you perform in filmmaking, whether it's a director or a gaffer or a post-production sound person, whatever it is that you do. We get we get all types of people, all types of roles here. Um, so let us know in the comments box on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, what is Black Magic Collective for anybody who doesn't know? We're a collective of film and TV artists and crew. Uh, we do all kinds of education events. We do panels like this all the time. We do trainings on, on things like how to use DaVinci Resolve, which is an awesome product that's put out by our main sponsor, uh, Black Magic Design, and so on and so on. Um, and with that, yes, special thank you to our, our sponsor, Black Magic Design. They're a rare company that really loves filmmakers, and they're the reason why we get to do what we do without charging anybody. Uh, please put any questions that you might have for our illustrious panelists in the Q&A box, and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can along the way. Uh, so, without any further ado, let's bring in our first of three guests, uh, Jordan Brady, uh, who began as a stand-up comedian touring nightclubs and colleges across America. He's an 100% self-taught filmmaker. He's directed four narrative feature films, three full documentaries, and over 1,200 national and regional commercials, and Maria Bamford's acclaimed Netflix comedy special. Welcome, Jordan. Wow. Thank you, Chris, for having me. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, great, great to see you. And uh, for our next guest, we have Hilliard Guess, who is a writer slash producer who's written on shows such as the Russo Brothers sci-fi series Deadly Class, and was recently the EP or executive producer slash showrunner of the indie digital series Ticker, which won Best Series at the 2021 World International Film Festival. He has made a name for himself in the indie world and has built a strong career that's made him invaluable managing sets in numerous writers and development rooms and producing TV and film from script to screen. Welcome, Hilliard. Great to see you. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, and last but not least, we have Tammy Magaro, uh, who is a film editor, photographer, and cat lover with more than 20 plus years of experience in those areas in film editing and, and cat loving. Um, her passion lies in editing, where she gets to stitch the story together and see it come to life. Uh, she does a weekly podcast, The Inner World of Filmmaking, where she interviews filmmakers in all facets of production and distribution. She's written and directed four of her own films, including homeschooling during the quarantine and the big break. Uh, currently, she's working on several clients uh, with several clients on various projects, uh, including a feature film, a vampire series, TikTok videos, corporate and government PSAs, as well as editing podcasts. Uh, welcome, Tammy. Uh, it's so nice to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Sure, sure. Um, I thought I would start all of us out. Uh, obviously, everybody here is a, a, a podcaster on some aspect of filmmaking. Uh, you all sort of cover different aspects of the field. But um, I, I'm sure that you'll all have, I, I think, insights that are relevant to this question. Uh, how do you, like every time you want to do you know, one of your podcasts, obviously, you have to choose the topic for your show and you have to choose any guests that you, you want to have appear on your show. Um, do you largely do that based on your own idea of what you're interested in, or do you solicit a lot of feedback from your audience as to what they want you to talk about? Um, what, what do you think about that, Jordan? How do you get those, the idea for a topic for your podcast? I, I just meet people and I've been, my podcast respect the process is very niche, right? It's a super niche about commercials. So a lot of times it's just cool people I work with. I say, would you be on the show? Or uh, like on Wednesdays, I sort of scour the web for new commercials and new people. And I see a new spot and it's a great reason to reach out to someone I've never met. Just like, hey, would you be on my show? Yeah. 
yeah so it, it basically you know you you run into people and you, you run into cool people and you say well I, you know I'll, I'll put them down as potential guests yeah and and i would add that you know um i noticed i had a lot of directors and a lot of dps and some agency creatives and i was like you know it'd be interesting to talk to the key grip yeah. hey the the sound mixers she's really interesting let's let's delve into the crew so we have all sides of the equation. I think it'd be interesting. That's dope. I like that. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Hilliard? How, how do you find guests and topics for your show? Well, my show <clears throat> is a little different. Somebody compared my show years ago. I'm on episode 441, by the way, of my yeah. show. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Wow. Screenwriter's <laughs> Rant Room, by the way. Um, and my show is an extension of what I used to teach at the Writers Guild and at uh, the Organization of Black Screenwriters. <clears throat> so we would, I would teach like, here's how I got a script to Sundance. Here's how I made my indie whatever film or, you know, whatever. But I'm one of those guys, I'm like, but here's the things that I messed up. You know, everybody else is teaching you, here's how you do it perfectly. And I'm like, no, 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 here's the mistakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it was an extension of that. We'd all be sitting out in the parking lot talking and somebody was like, you need to have a podcast. And I was like, eh, like I, I do that with everything. I'm like, eh, <laughs> you know, and eventually something shifts and I make a decision to do it. So to answer your question, uh, I would, the only time I have anything kind of prepared on my show is when I have like some big show runner on, which is like once a month, <laughs> you know, and even then I'm not prepared. Mm -hmm. I literally, being in the industry for so long, I just happen to know most of them. So it's more me having a conversation with them, getting to know them for the audience. I'm always trying to think, I'm sure my, um, uh, the other guests up here could say the same. Sometimes you are just having a conversation for your audience, even yeah. though you know the people, <clears throat> you know what I mean? So you're pretending like you don't know them, but here are the questions I would ask if I didn't know, you mm -hmm. know? And so, um, so my shows nine times out of ten we have absolutely nothing planned. I have no questions written down. I just start talking. Oh, I'm so I'm so relieved to hear you say that because yeah. I thought, knowing the three of you, I'm going to be the before. I'm going to be the guy that don't model your podcast after <laughs> mine because I've never prepared. I mean, I know the person's work. You know, I right. watch his or her or their stuff, but it's just a conversation. So thank you for that. But, but see, that's what made, I'm going to upstage this whole thing. I apologize. Um, but I think that's what makes it so real to my audience. They feel like they're jumping in. And, yeah. and, and, and it's, I always think it's like an extension of the writer's room. You know, that first half hour, hour in the writer's room, we're all just talking shit about whatever's going on, you know, yeah. before we even start, you know, oh, you know, such and such brought up that idea about politics. What if the character, you know what I mean? And then we start the show, you know what I mean? So anyway. Thank you. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like you're just having a candid conversation with somebody else in the industry and you happen to have, you know, a mic set up. And pick that's up why we're called the rant room, because we yeah. go off on different shit. Excuse yeah. me if I curse too much, by the way. No, that's, that's fine. And, and it's, uh, yeah, and it's the authenticity that, that, of that that people are drawn to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what, what about you, Tammy? How do you make those kinds of choices? Well, um, I'm a little different. I'm a little bit more of a planner, so I do <laughs> write up all you my would. questions. <laughs> but I am learning now uh, through, I've been doing this for over a year now. So um, through the process, I've learned that I don't like that way. I feel like I really want to flow in conversation, but sometimes I need to have an anchor to guide me through the show. Sure. Um, but once I get going, so this last podcast that I recorded, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put bullet points and I'm going to just go off the cuff more. So, and I think it was a better show. Um, and when I start to comment on their uh, answers, mm -hmm. then it, it flows and I feel like it's too structured. So yeah. I'm going towards that way. And then uh, the guests on the show, it started with just my friends, my filmmaking friends to start the podcast. And then I went from there to just reaching out to other people in all facets of production. It's kind of grown from there. And now I'm getting my guests sending me guests, which is great. Yeah. So yeah. now it's gone to pretty much international. So it's been really exciting and fun. Yeah. Oh, that's can, great. I, can I interject something? Oh, please do. Mind? I, I'm glad you said that because one of the things I remember when I first started, uh, I don't know if you guys know showrunner Mick Bettencourt. He used to have a show called The Mick Bettencourt Show. <clears throat> and he told me that the key to really spreading your audience is to be on other people's podcasts and to have yeah. other guests 
who have their shows on yours. You know, so that's what I started doing. And so that's how I got on, you know, script notes or all those other things is I would just reach out and they'd reach out to me and I'd have them on my show and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, we it's sometimes we sometimes do the simulpod where we just share the same file. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I like that. Tell tell me about that. Explain that. What does that mean? Well, so uh, I had a filmmaker, Daniel Cardenas. He has a podcast called The Circle Take which for our younger viewers back in the day used to circle the takes that would get printed on film. You just <laughs> didn't have every single take available to you. You right. had to make a decision on set. Uh, so he has a podcast and I have respect the process. And we, so we just sat in the same room and we took turns asking each other questions. And then that one, we actually edited my blabbing out <laughs> so, so it was more Daniel centric. And then he edited himself out, you know, his answers out for his podcast. But sometimes it it's just a flow where two podcasts just share the same recording. That's cool. I like that. Efficient. And, and actually speaking of that, and that, that was a question that I wanted to ask as well. Like how much editing do you do to the audio that you eventually end up with that you record with the guest? I mean, I know some people, yeah, at Hilliard, it sounds like maybe you don't do that much editing. Yeah, I don't edit anything. In its format. Yeah. Out of the 400 and some episodes we've done, I think I've taken out maybe two or three things because <clears throat> some showrunner said, you know, I realized, I think I said that thing about that job. I probably shouldn't have said that. And I'll cut out that little two minute piece or whatever. Yeah. That's it. Two or three times. Not so. Don't avoid breaching any NDAs or whatever. But other than that, you know, anything goes. People know to keep it real on my show, you know. Yeah. So that's that's the audience. So for sure, that's great. Uh, what about you, Tammy? Do you do a lot of editing? I do way too much. Um, <laughs> I. Well, you're an edit, editor, right? Yeah. Right, and Natural and instinct. I want I want everybody to sound good, so I'm always thinking about that too. And mm -hmm. I have edited out stuff that people have said because uh, I want them to, you know, sound great. So sometimes yeah. I will edit it and people have told me I've got to stop doing that. I'm wasting, I'm wasting too much time. I don't know. I just, it's my show. So I enjoy the editing yeah. process. And now that I'm doing video too, I am putting up graphics and stuff. So I'm able to um, stitch it a little bit better than, you know, I audio only, you don't notice the cuts, but in video right. you do. So yes, I do edit a lot. Right. And is that mostly with a concern of just making sure that, you know, you're all the listeners are always getting valuable information and you're not listening to somebody be like, uh, well, I, um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I take out, yeah. yeah, I take out all the, um, or not all the ums. I take out a lot of the ums or the, you knows and, and repeating and stuttering and anybody that coughs, I try to take those. You would hate out, my so. show, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just my style, I guess, at this point. I love point. it. I just don't have the time. <laughs> This is how we talk. We in the yeah. right room. This is it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love it. <laughs> uh, what, what about you, Jordan? Do you have, is, is it really spontaneous and you keep all the audio or do you, do you edit some out? Well, my, my son, Jake Brady edits uh, my show and we, we have a system. So I drop box him the file and tell him like, Hey, I think old dad's told this story about three times. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to one up you Hilliard, but I just dropped episode 470. Right. So I, keep going, keep going. Um, and, and so my son will say any notes and I go, yeah, I think I told that story. Hey, um, the creative director, this actually happened one time. A creative director told a story that he didn't care if the spots we had just made sold any cars. And I go, he said, leave it in, but I think we got to take it out to protect him. I don't think his team and clients want to want to hear that. Yeah. So we did. Um, but our process is I tell every guest, Jake is going to edit the show. If there's something you want to start over or you say something, you're like, you know, I don't think I should have said that. Just say Jake. And we take it out. The other day, the woman in the office complex, I'm in, started vacuuming outside my door. Oh. So yeah. I just go, hey, Jake, I'm going to go tell Lupita to stop. Uh, that's our friend here. To stop vacuuming for a second. And so it's like, you know, 90 seconds of me in the hall talking. I come back in. When you hear the show, it's flawless. Yeah. It just we go from one to the other. The other editing thing we do is we have these little 
I bought a package of three little st music stings. Yeah. Doodle doo little interlude yeah. ludes. Mm -hmm. And so if a topic's going on and on, he'll cut it and then we pick back up later to make an hour and a half down to an hour or whatever the the chat was. So is so it like hard. a is it like a transition or a time jump or something like is is it thought of like that or something or what? Is yeah, that? yeah, that's a, it's it's just to conclude one thought okay. and then we can jump start later. Got it. Um and you know in listening to uh the uh, inner world binging Tammy's podcast I mm -hmm. Realize you just get right into it. We have like <laughs> this woman, Helen, intros the show. Then I babble for eight minutes, and then we do the interview. <laughs> then there's a commercial break. Like it's it's a production, but thankfully I've got you know it's it's also an excuse to work with my kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's cute. Yeah. I like yeah. that. And actually, that that makes me realize what I should have done at the beginning uh, of the bios was to say what the name of everybody's podcast is, which, uh, which seems to be, you know, what we're here to talk about. And for, so for Jordan, it's respect the process. Right. Mm -hmm. And then for Hilliard, it's yeah, the, the, the writer's room rant. Screenwriters. Rant, screen, rant. Uh, screenwriters. Screen, screenwriters. Rant, yeah. It's a great, um, great title. And then Tammy, uh, the inner world of filmmaking. Um, and yeah, de definitely listen to that uh, wherever fine podcasts are purveyed. I, I wanted to follow up on, on one thing that you said, Jordan, uh, which was about, well, I know that you have a background in commercials, uh, and I wonder if that has influenced your approach to marketing your podcast. Like, if there are any sort of tips that you could give people who are starting their own podcasts about how to market it and, and stand out in the vast sea of content that, that we all find ourselves in. Sure, um, Pod Snacks. We we started doing Pod Snacks around 2018 with concurrent with like six second social advertising bits and 15, 15 second spots, 10 second spots that we would shoot for major clients. I realized, okay, we need, you know, anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute and we post them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't do it as consistently. I mean, that's the flaw here for anybody going to start their own podcast. Consistency I think is the, is the key. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that, Jordan, because on my show, I probably out of the entire year <clears throat> go through maybe don't drop four episodes the entire year. Every Monday, I drop an episode. You've never missed a Monday. I said it's separate, maybe about four, four out of the entire year. Wow. I'll probably miss, and they're scattered like every six months. I might, like, I missed it last week just because I've been staffing the two TV shows right now. So it's been crazy for me. So I was like, I need a week. I need a week. <laughs> you know what that's mean? what I said. Yeah. I'm the before. I'm the what you don't do. I'm. <laughs> I should be in black and white with uh, a big <laughs> circle and X through me. And these two, they're, they're these three are who you want to model people. Well, I'm sure a lot of people feel that way about their earliest podcasts. I mean, mm. because you have to do a certain amount of learning on the job. I think that's probably inevitable, right? Well, and I also think it's your style. You, you uh, maybe when you start, you have to figure out well, what is my style. Yeah. versus other people's styles sure. like jordan was saying like he just gets you know he does an introduction there's a lot more going on and um i'm still kind of a newbie to this to the other two um so i'm just trying to figure out what my style is and hopefully in like a couple of years i'll look back and go oh my god i can't believe i did that you know look at how i'm doing it now so well i think you're already starting to pivot just in the fact that you went with this episode i'm going to do this and yes. i think i'm sure jordan and i did the same thing yeah. I probably oh, yeah. was a lot more like, let me read the bios when I first started. And then I was like, <laughs> girl, I don't need to do none of that. I'm just going right. to talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm good. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. You don't, yeah. You just go right into the conversation. I mean, I might read the bio a day or two before, just if it's somebody I don't know. But, you know, otherwise, I'm just talking to them about, you know, like, like as if I just met them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Uh and, and what would you say, you know, if you were talking to just a starting creator about sort of how to stand out in terms of your branding, uh, in, in terms of your marketing? Are you asking me? I'm yeah. horrible at it. Horrible at it. Um, for example, we probably have like 300,000 people listen to my show. Yeah. Um, that's just throughout the year. You know, I probably don't have the numbers Jordan and them have. Um, and it's mainly because I'm kind of like Jordan. I'm very niche. 
you know, like my audience is pretty much the people of color in Hollywood, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And, um, you know, we're smaller than, you know, our white counterparts. counterparts. And so, you know, that's why I, at first it used to bother me, you know, that, for example, and I've told this to John, you know, the John August and those guys get, you know, 30,000 people in a week and I might get, you know, one or two, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, but I started realizing, oh, but I can be myself here though, you know, and people understand me. We could talk about what's going on with Rihanna at the same time, talk about a TV show, you know, which is why we talk about music and, you know, um, culture and like all these other things. We're not just about screenwriting, you know, even though that's our main thing, you know. I bet those perform well, don't they? When you oh. get personal, the it's yeah. for me, that's when we stray and talk about that time at summer camp right. when the guy found the camera or like, those are the, those are the good ones. Yeah. I'm always surprised that every time I have on some big showrunner, you know, or even actors and a lot of actors too, you know, I'm always like, Oh, this is probably going to be huge. And they're, they're just good. And the ones, like you said, where we're just having a real conversation, you know, with even, even, cause I have a lot of like uh, uh, episodes where I just bring on writers who I just met and I'm like, come on the show and we'll just talk and they could ask me questions. Those episodes are huge, yeah. you know, for me at least. They're not, you know, script notes huge, but they're huge for me, you know, way bigger than in some big actor or, you know, showrunner coming on. I have a Pelican case with a, a recorder and two mics that I can take anywhere. Okay. And I took it to Texas and after the shoot, it was during the pandemic, so I drove from L.A. to Texas. And after the shoot, I sat on the back of the truck with the DP and the two creative directors from the ad agency, the art director and the copywriter. And we had a conversation about these treatments, these pesky treatments that commercial directors do, as well as, you know, everybody's doing treatments, right? And it was maybe 25 minutes and there were people rapping and you could hear all the ambient sounds and everything. It was one of the best episodes I got all the nice comments. It performed really well. Uh, for for anyone watching, you can check your stats. Like you can see yeah. what episodes you know uh, yeah. get downloaded the most and everything. <clears throat> but it was just an off the cuff conversation, no agenda, and it was real. I think authenticity is the key to podcasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Should I drop the mic on that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you've got like a soft mat on the floor. Yeah. Right. Uh, how about you, Tammy? Uh, do you, uh, what sort of approach to marketing your podcast would you recommend to someone who was starting out? Well, um, just like it was mentioned, consistency. I mean, I'm a weekly podcast. You have to be consistent. Um, I've started doing Instagram posts um, for like, um, uh, throwback Thursdays. And then I do past shows. I do coming soon. I post every Tuesday. I post the, the show and a little bit about them. If I were really had a lot more time, I'd be posting every day, you know, yeah. constantly doing hashtags, doing, you know, uh, tags to people. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I need to do a lot more than that, but time permits. I have a question for you guys. Do you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't mean to okay. fidget. I'm sorry I keep doing that. I'm such in the habit of talking to people like this. <laughs> I, I really apologize. I don't mean to be the guy. We'll, we'll just have um, a rant like conversation. Right. <laughs> exactly. This is the show. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing, here, let me ask you guys this. So somebody also told me a long time ago, there's a couple of things that I do. I'm wondering, do you guys do, do you have certain times of the day when you, you know, post your shows? Like everybody told me to do it, for example, our time from like 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. is like the best time to do it from what I was told. Um, and also bringing it back and like doing a recap on it like days later is something that I try to do. I don't do it every week, but I try to like go, in case you missed it, Here's the episode again. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to get in the habit of that. Just curious what you guys do. But that's a no. I try for Thursday and it's my schedule is so fluid that it's if I'm if I'm lucky, I make it Thursday. So if I can get up early, it's Thursday morning. If it's you don't late, have a job. It's <laughs> Thursday night. And uh recently I put one out on Sunday and um with the marketing, 
if I were starting one today, because we started in fall of 2013 and it wasn't as big, right? We just were chugging away. And I did promise I would have every Thursday and then gigs happened and vacation, whatever. Not that you can't schedule them. Like there's automation that you could, you could do if you were just starting out, but I would consider, I don't do this and I don't think any of you do this, but I would consider doing seasons Mm -hmm. because that's, that's evolved out of podcasting in the last handful of years. Um, I remember serial was like the first big one that I, my wife and I listened to. My wife's an alumni of black magic collective, by the way. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Jeanette Godoy, filmmaker, Jeanette Godoy, probably not listening to this because she's tired of me. Wonderful. But if you did, <laughs> if you did a season and like got six in the can, found your style, maybe that first one you recorded, you put forth or something because you like if you really were going to launch a filmmaking podcast, I would say break the seasons down into topics, and then get them on the can. Like I said, get them all pretty, and then release them consistently, or hell, schedule them for you know Wednesday at two p.m. Yeah, sure. Uh, that would be a, a great way to market it and, and, you know, amortize the the time and effort that you're putting into it. Yeah. And for me, um, I post I post on Anchor and I okay. post it at like 3 a.m. So that way it okay. hits by all the coasts by the morning. Um, I usually do the um, and so I'm trying to edit ahead of time. So I'm always a week so I can schedule it and then just know that it's going to post. I do my social media posts. I do it in Canva. So I create animated posts, post them as reels. Um, and I try to post them around 10 to 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's my time zone or time that I was told is a good time to post. So I do it on Tuesday um, and then. I, uh, oh, and I also post to IMDb because now you can post your podcast there oh, really? and I do seasons. Oh, I didn't take know that notes. At all. Yeah, teach yeah. Me that one. yeah, so uh, that's been great. Um, and then, yeah, so I usually post that on Tuesday as well. I'll go on to IMDb and do it. And then I've done seasons. So I do, oh. I don't do them by category. I do them just by every 15 episodes is one season. So I'm on season five now. Wow. I guess the reason why I didn't do it is I found when I tried to do that at first and then I came back, like we lost a lot of people and I was like, oh, I just need to go all year on. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? So that's what that was. That was part of the And then it came back again, <clears throat> you know, but it took me about six months to get it back, you know, mm. um, but that was by choice. So, you yeah. know, I think it will work for you. It's great, though. That's awesome. Now I'll post some love from the audience. Brittany Bertier says, I love your podcast, Hilliard. Oh, thanks. Hey, girl. <laughs> um, actually, uh, we were just talking about Anchor um, and a couple of other social media platforms. I wonder if anyone has insights into uh, not only the time when it's best to post your episodes, but uh, what platform, w- whether it be Twitter or Facebook or, or whatever, uh, gives you the most bang for your buck as far as the, the listenership that you get out of posting your episodes there? I get I the po- most. Oh, go ahead, Jordan. I'm sorry. Well, I, I'll be quick. I post mine to a site called Libsyn, mm-hmm. and I pay between 20 and 40 bucks a month for that, depending upon how big the files are. But let's say 20 bucks is enough bandwidth, and I upload, and then Libsyn, like Anchor or Podbean or the others, comes with a pay of your podcast page. Yeah. But I don't promote that or do anything with it. Libsyn mm-hmm. disseminates the feed to everywhere. Yeah. to Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, the whole bit. And then I have, again, not the guy you want to emulate. <laughs> I copy and paste everything from this post, the show notes, uh, you know, the photos, the, the tags, the hot links to the guest website and everything to my WordPress site at jordanbrady.com. Like it's Jordan Brady slash respect the process, whatever. And from there, so there's a built-in redundancy because I'm stupid. <laughs> I have to copy and paste the shit I just put up. But from my WordPress, I can have the guest photo and I can write a little more if I want. And that goes to LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and another place I'm forgetting. Probably some defunct platform. So many social media platforms. Yeah. 
It's crazy. I think I'm more of a – I post – I only have like three or four places that I post. Because, you know, they took off the darn thing on Facebook where you don't have your – you can't post your – like if you had your um, your page for your uh, podcast or whatever. So now you can't even really post your stuff on there anymore. So, really? How long is – I haven't uh, checked. It's been maybe about a year now or something. Because uh, that used to be pretty good for me, and I stopped doing that. But I only pretty much go to Twitter because I engage more there and, and um, Instagram. And the other one is uh, LinkedIn is actually really big for me. I'm always surprised by that. Yeah, that's and the best. mainly it's because there's different um, groups. I'm, like I'm part of you know the PGA group and all these other things. So there's those groups actually spread it really well for me, you know. And so, um, and then the Writers Guild, there's all these different little, you know, groups I've been there too. So yeah, I use, I utilize those. In particular. Yeah. How about you, Tammy? Yeah. You, you seem like someone who would, who would calculate this kind of thing. Or <laughs> this fairly precisely. Teach us, girl. Teach us. Yeah. I wish, I wish. Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty much uh, Instagram and I was doing it on Facebook, but I'm noticing the links aren't going. So sometimes I don't think to post it there again. Uh, LinkedIn, I've done, um, I need to be better. I, I've done Facebook groups. So that's mm -hmm. another thing. Um, mm -hmm. But I like the idea. I've been meaning to do the LinkedIn groups because I'm a part of some of those groups as well. Okay. Yeah, try it. See if it makes any difference. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, and you're all professionals who work in the industry, and so presumably, you, yeah, you have contacts and use these LinkedIn groups. Um, and yeah, you're all in this sort of you know. Oh, while we're talking about this though, do you guys add anything? Like for example, you Jordan, you pretty much copy and paste what what's already written for you there. I like to make it a little bit more in my flavor. So for example, I might say, "Yo, what's that writing community?" <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm always talking or changing that a little bit, you know, Amen. in some way, um, the, because the that's post, how we talk. So just curious. Well, the, the, the blog post, which, P.S., I think when I send the blog post, it's a WordPress post mm -hmm. to Facebook. I think it takes it. Like you have to click on the guest mm -hmm. picture and then okay. it'll take you to my blog. So I think that might be a workaround for Facebook. I don't post the file to Facebook. Okay. But like on LinkedIn, I put up the one I put up Sunday, so I click, and then I'll put I'll paste it into LinkedIn, and then I'll write my flavor above the actual post. The yeah. yo, check out this guy's work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I just <laughs> I I write up everything, so I write it, and then usually I post the same things <laughs> to every channel. But yeah, um, me too. Yeah, yeah, but it's just it sounds like me though. Yeah, you know, what exactly. Did, as opposed to a robot who did it. Right. That's, yeah, I was just curious of what you guys did. Awesome. Let's go. Right. Um, and, and, sorry, I know I'm totally killing you. I'll oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's I, Because, no, it's like you say, I don't want to just go down sort of a list of questions because yeah. then that, that yeah, that, that that's exactly what you avoid with your show and, you know, keeping it real and keeping it authentic. This, this is how you know I'm interested, though. You know, that these oh, yeah. two, you know, have <laughs> such a cool yeah. way of doing it. I'm like, ooh, what about this? How do you guys do that? You know what I mean? So, curious. Yeah. Well, well, I, I I would be remiss if I didn't get into the subject of, of technical nerdiness, um, because we are, you know, Black Magic Collective. We are basically a, a place for tech nerds to gather. Um, and I wanted to ask, uh, what kind of hardware setup you use? You know, what kind of mics? And do you use a treated room? Uh, and are there? And I, I, yeah, I guess we could talk about audio software too. Um, that would be interesting to me too. Um, why, why don't we Why don't we start with you, Tammy? What uh, What's your your hardware setup? So um, I have a Samson mic. I did do the Sure, but then I just ended up going back to this. I have a mic stand, a Sony headset. Yeah. I plug into the Scarlet. That's, uh, yeah. That interfaces with my computer. I record on Riverside. I did start on Zencaster, then I just moved to Riverside because I could share my screen. So that was kind of nice. I really wish Riverside would have virtual backgrounds, which would be great. Uh, that's something I hope that they add to their features. Um, let's see. And I think that's it. That would be. And then I edit. I started in DaVinci. I would edit in DaVinci Resolve, and then I moved it to Premiere. So now I'm editing my show in Premiere. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jordan. Well, Helen has been with the show since 2013. Helen is a British woman who introduces Respect the Process with great flair. I've never met her. 
I bought her voice from a service. I talked to Helen during the show, even with a guest in the room, and everyone loves Helen. And she says the same thing every week, and I always compliment her on the intro. That's funny. I like then I intro the guest with the, the workhorse of the industry is the SM7B, the Shure yeah. microphone that I'm using today that goes to a Scarlet. Um, but now Shure makes like the sort of the redheaded cousin that is a USB mic that can go right to your computer. But the real fun is this rig, which is, this is the Zoom F6 32-bit float. It takes up to six people, but I only like one guest at a time, sometimes two. <laughs> one time a guest brought his mother. That was weird. <laughs> and I've got headphones for them that I sanitize. A uh, $70 mic from Guitar Center. I got a few of them because they break. The headphones I get at Best Buy when they go on sale, the Sony's for $19. I just get them every, you know, couple times a year. And it all comes down to the 99 cent store splitter so we can all hear ourselves. Uh, so I take this memory card and I put it into uh, Adobe Audition, which is a multi-track with a podcast template. I Dropbox the file called raw i put like i would put you know i would put uh you know so and so director raw jake takes it downloads edits he sends it back to me edit so we always have like a a backup plan and he then puts in those little stings i talked about there's a mid-show commercial there's a wrap-up thing with music and some like a call to action for some of my film school products and it's it's a it's like an assembly line, yeah. So those are the tools, the tricks, and the process. Yeah. Well, you've been doing it for years. Now you've got you've got it down to a science. We just yesterday said, okay, it's 2023. We have to regroup. We need a new mid-show thing. Our the files get corrupt and copies get yeah. made, and so we did like a cleaning house. Nice. And uh, it's streamlined, though. Yes. Yeah. Long answer. Sorry. Mine is pretty simple. Um, so during when the Rona first came, uh, we were on Zencaster or Zoom or Skype, depending on you know whatever we were on. Um, I, I prefer Zencaster just because the sound is better, you know, which is a big thing. I, I can't stand when sound is bad on a podcast; it drives me bananas. <clears throat> so every once in a while, like we'll still have to do somebody who's out of town. You know, but I like whenever I do the Writers Guild podcast, which I help them start, um, Third and Fairfax, um, I hate it because it's always on Zoom and I think it just sounds like shit. <laughs> you know, do you see the um, numbers drop off a of Zoom recording versus in person? Probably. It depends on who it is. Because uh, I would say nine times out of 10 when I get somebody on Zoom, it's because it's Barry Jenkins or somebody. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, of course, those are going to do well you know, for the most part, but if it's, um, I prefer to do it in person and to realize, you know, the state we're in and, you know, all the sanitization you have to do. Um, but I have a, in my office here, um, I'm on the lot in uh, West Hollywood next to where own used to be. They just moved. Did you guys know that? Yeah, they're not here anymore. <clears throat> um, uh, and I have a big like little conference table and we all gather around the table. It's usually three or four of us on any given day. Um, me and my co-host Chris, it used to be Lisa Bolacaja, um, and uh, whoever my guest is, and sometimes I bring in, I usually have three or four young writers sitting and just watching us, you know, mm -hmm. on any given day. And it's just because I want them to get some game, you know, and to learn stuff, and, you know, it's kind of who I am, I'm all about that. Um, and one of the things I figured out a long time ago, this could give you guys a little help, for those of you who have your, and I have my mic stands and my mixing board, and we're all sitting at a table, we all have our own little, you know, mic stand sitting up. And one of the tricks that I learned was I put a uh, blanket on top of the mm. table to yeah. take out some of the sound. So there's no echo. There's, it sounds, we all sound like we're inside of a real studio, you know, <clears throat> which is really, really helpful. So I really encourage a lot of writers if they're doing their podcast, don't just sit there, even if you're at your desktop, you know, and you're doing your podcast, put something up under it. It just makes it sound a little bit more solid, you know. Um, 
And then I, when I'm done, I'll, you know, download the file. We do it on GarageBand, by the way. We're still old school. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the only way I know how to do it. So this is what I do. Do you, do you send it out on cassette? Beta <laughs> <laughs> Max, something you know, yeah. some floppy something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I just you know I share it to and turn it to an MP4, three, whatever it is, and then I just retransfer it to my editor, and he can do all the things you guys do, but I don't want him to. All I want him to do is put in my theme song at the top and bring it back at the end, you know, and then make all the sound sound equal, and that's pretty yeah. much all he does. And then he uploads it to. Um, anchor and all that other stuff for me and all i do is write you know the show notes for him um what do you do chris i i don't have a podcast i'm the only person i know in the entertainment industry who does not have a podcast <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me in the future you'll get a social security number in a podcast when you're <laughs> right, yeah um i have just one other comment um i found uh i think it's in it's um i forgot hmm. it's called enhanced speech from adobe it's in a beta version. Yeah. Um, I've been putting my audio through that. And a lot of times it makes my guests sound a lot better because not all guests bring mic or, you know, because I'm doing it online. Right. Um, not everybody has a mic and it really helps their audio. So. I've heard it. Yeah. I've been toying with that audition part of the Adobe suite. Mm -hmm. um, we put a broadcast compressor on the guests a lot just to pump it up. And I don't know if you can see, but I have like soundproofing behind where my guests. Oh, I'm funny. in a I'm in a pretty soundproof room. It's so key because people just don't want to listen to shitty audio. Yeah, for sure. Right. Are you guys in Hollywood, LA? Where are you guys at, by the way? I'm I'm in North Hollywood, also in a treated room, but that's because I usually record music here rather than I'm podcast saying. audio. But I, I, I'll, I should start doing that one day too. What about you, Tammy? Uh, I'm here in S San Diego. Okay, so you just yeah. down the street. Yeah. I'm at this uh, Santa Monica airport, and you can't even hear. Occasionally, there'll be like a little private plane that you'll hear. Like yeah. I said, I'm on the Lot Studios in West Hollywood, and my my neighbor is. I'm not trying to say this as a as a as a LA jerk, but it's Sasha Baron Cohen. So Ooh, nice. I hear him now. He's nice. like really loud, and he's got that really thick British accent. He's called me Hilliard. Um, yada 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 yada. <laughs> so he, he's always loud. This kills me. Get him on the show. <laughs> he's too busy. <laughs> Does oh, that I create an issue? Really, uh, now you've that? got all these people on the lot or something like that, like or, no, or background I, noise. I record on Sundays, and yeah. so there's literally absolutely mm. nobody here on Sunday. Yeah, so we could be as loud as we want, and sometimes it's six people around a mic, you know, yeah. literally having a conversation, and four or five, you know, young writers watching us. You know. I mean, that that's a great bonus. I mean, yeah. to be able to do the vast majority of it in person, and I, I imagine that that changes the vibe too. I mean, well, you know, Zoom is going to be awkward. Well, you know, so many people have asked us, like you guys are videoing yours, I believe you both said, <clears throat> and I tried it once, and everybody started acting different, and I was mm -hmm. like, mm, no, you know. Then you get worried about what you're saying and what you're doing and how you're looking and yeah. you know and all that stuff, and I'm like, uh -uh, I'm not doing it, so I stopped. Yeah. yeah, I make my guests wear headphones because I think it, it puts you in an, in an oral environment that's more intimate. And during the pandemic, and yes, for some bigger name guests or people in New York or Germany or Australia, I've interviewed, we've done the Zoom, which records video. So occasionally I've put that up as a little pod snack. But I agree with you wholeheartedly that the video, just the camera being there makes people act different. The intimacy of audio is wonderful, yeah. and the and the electrons. I mean, I love the three of you and all the people watching, uh, and I mean that. And we have a great connection. And Chris, you're hosting a great thing here. It's just it's not the same as an hour conversation with electrons okay. bouncing off each other. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes for a much better show. And we have two shows right now. Two big big shows for Amazon right now that I just staffed and we were fighting like crazy to get them in person, you know, and they're both in person. One of them started today and the other one starts next week, you know? <clears throat> so it's been crazy, crazy. You know, I have a question. Um, how often are you guys recording your shows? Or do you record a couple ahead of time and then you're posting out or are you recording a show a week and then posting the next week? 
I do mine every Sunday, like the the one that just dropped this week. And I, then I just taped it on okay. Sunday and dropped it the next day. Right. Every blue moon, I'll bank a couple. Like if I know I'm going to be on set for a while or something, I'll bank two or three of them in a in a weekend or something, and then mm-hmm. I'll let them last while I know I'm shooting or something. Other I like that. to bank six or seven, and then take a month off of recording. That's like right. last week I did two in a day, and there's one filmmaker I've been asking him to be on the respect the process for it's everywhere you pod for about two <laughs> years and he finally hit me back it's up now his name is digby and he does fabulous like experiential promos and commercials yes and he said what what's the turnaround i go you know it's usually like two months six weeks later that i'll post it and he goes can you can you get it out for black history month yeah. he's a he's a black filmmaker mm-hmm. and i said i mean i i we could i think the interview is going to be uh timeless but he goes well i think it would be it would really help i said okay let's do it so we actually turned it around we recorded on friday it came out sunday and i would have done it saturday yeah but that's it you know that's interesting not to go off topic but with there's such a uh i'm the poster child of white privilege and no. So, yeah. What? Yeah. And even this light makes me look more white. <laughs> Straight cis white male. You got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what was that? My point was sometimes I'll have filmmakers on, and we've we try to just talk about filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And I had a woman leave, and she goes, "We didn't even talk about that. I'm a woman filmmaker." And so it was like, "Oh, well, I didn't. You know, I didn't even." I'm sorry. Did you want to go back in and talk about it? She goes, no, I was, I didn't want to talk about it. Whereas other guests want to make a point and I wanted to offer the platform. So when Digby, you know, we're going back and forth and he wants it out. And we talked about, uh, because so, so much of the diversity programs are bullshit in my opinion oh, yeah. from the outside in. And my wife is a Latina and she's done many programs. I want to see people get a job. I don't want to see you shadow me or get an opportunity to watch someone else. So I want, and I think Disney offers directors a job, which is kind of ironic. It's Disney, but my, what's my point? They have you, to shadow you, first though. <laughs> yeah, of course. Exactly. Unless, which is fine. Unless you're a straight white male, then they get, exactly. they can go straight to the top. <laughs> so uh, my point being, I think, what i've learned is ask my guests hey is there anything like i usually conclude with is there anything we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about Mm. like i want my show to be a platform even if it's something i disagree with but i will tell you this more than one middle-aged straight straight white male director on my show has brought up in the last two years how you know, now everybody wants that you got to be a woman, you got to be a black filmmaker, you got to. And I'm like, hey, we're not going to go. We're not going to talk about this because one, not only do I do, I think we've had the advantage for decades. Right. But it's not a good look, brother. <laughs> and one person said something and I called my son. I go, hey, this is bad. And he called me because what was that guy thinking? And we cut it out. So we we always want the guests to look good. And at the same time, we want to give the guests the platform for something that they want to talk about. It's not just race or gender or equality. Sometimes it's as blatant as I know a DP who invented this weird bobblehead thing you put under the camera between the tripod and the camera. Come on the show, man. Talk about your product. Let's pimp it. That was a long rant. That was good. There was a lot of game in there, though. <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, on that note, uh, we're we're out of time at this point, but I, I wanted to thank you all for all of your wonderful insights. I wish we could go on for another hour and, and get all of your, your tips and tricks. I would encourage anyone who is interested in seeing how filmmaking podcasting is done to watch the programs that our wonderful guests put out. Um, and yeah, with that, thanks very much for coming. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And Thank nice you meeting guys. everyone. Thank and you yeah, can nice meeting you. Email mm-hmm. me with any questions if you're about to start a podcast or whatever. I would love to help. Great. And I'd love to have you guys on the show. So we'll have to. We'll have oh, to, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.